hi, welcome back to Digit.in. My name is Vignesh. Now, in the last few months, we've seen Nokia release the Nokia 4.2, which was a pretty good phone, admittedly. And then it launched the Nokia 3.2, which in my opinion was, eh, meh, don't get it. That's what I thought about it. And then it launched the Nokia 2.2. What do you think I think about it? Okay, let's talk about the build and design. Nokia says that the phone is comprised of a solid polycarbonate body that has a high gloss finish. Well, in reality, the Nokia 2.2 looks and plays the part of a budget smartphone with very ordinary levels of build and design. The phone's glossy back panel seems sturdy and presentable in the hands, but not particularly strong or eye-catching. Drumming idly on the back panel with your fingers causes a hollow plasticky sound to emanate from the back panel. You'll want to buy a bottle of Colin with this phone because the back panel is a palm-sized magnet for fingerprints and smudges. Being a budget smartphone, the Nokia 2.2 does not get a dual camera setup on the back. Instead, it gets a modest single sensor shooter on the back with a single LED flash. The top side of the Nokia 2.2 is home to a 3.5mm audio jack, but that's about it. There's no secondary microphone anywhere in the vicinity. The left side of the phone houses a dedicated Google Assistant key, which by default fires up the virtual assistant even if the screen is turned off. The bottom side of the Nokia 2.2 gets a micro USB port and the primary microphone. The right side is home to the power button and volume rocker, which are a little hard to press because of the steep inward curvature of the body. In addition, the lower right side has a tiny tab with which the user can remove the back panel entirely. On the inside, we see two card slots on either side, one of which houses the primary SIM card and a micro SD card. The other slot houses the secondary SIM card. Most of the space inside is occupied by a user-removable lithium-ion polymer battery with a typical capacity of 3000 mAh. It goes without saying then that the Nokia 2.2 does not get an IP rating for water and dust resistance. Unlike its brethren, it does not get a notification light either. In summary, the Nokia 2.2 has pretty decent build and design for its price. Let's move on to the display. The size of the Nokia 2.2's display is the same as that on the costlier Nokia 4.2. It's a 5.71 inch LCD panel with an HD plus resolution. The top portion of the display is home to what Nokia likes to call a selfie notch. While games like Asphalt 9 fill up the screen area around the notch, games like PUBG Mobile don't. Though the Nokia 2.2 appears to share its display with the older Nokia 4.2, there's a noticeable drop in quality on the cheaper unit. Colors on the Nokia 2.2's display look a tad darker than they are in reality. Brightness is plenty enough for viewing content in most environments. Like the back panel, the display has a glossy finish, which makes the surface easily prone to smudges and fingerprints. If you're buying the Nokia 2.2 for good audio, prepare to be disappointed. It has a single loudspeaker on the back panel, which is decent for calls, ringtones and alarms, but no good for music. Sound from the tiny driver is muddled and sometimes unclear. Let's move on to performance. The Nokia 2.2 employs a MediaTek Helios A22 chipset. Built on a 12 nanometer process, the chipset offers a quad-core CPU. The Nokia 2.2 is offered in two variants, one with 2 GB RAM plus 16 GB internal storage that's priced at 6,999 rupees, and another with 3 GB RAM plus 32 GB of internal storage that's priced at 7,999 rupees. Our review unit was, of course, the latter. In everyday scenarios, the Nokia 2.2 review unit was almost a pain to use. Right from the initial Android setup screen, the phone was slow to respond. Bringing up the default keyboard would take up to 4 seconds in general. Everyday applications such as YouTube and Chrome would take about 4 to 6 seconds on an average to be launched and ready. Pressing the dedicated Google Assistant key would sometimes result in nothing for about 3 to 4 seconds. In summary, get the Nokia 2.2 if you don't mind waiting for things to happen on your phone. Gaming on the review unit was an equally painful and disappointing experience. According to our Gamebench metrics tool, Asphalt 9 ran at a median frame rate of 10 frames per second and PUBG Mobile 15 frames per second on forced low graphics settings. Playing either game was a proper challenge. The frames moved at a noticeably low rate and made controlling the player a difficult task. 
It was neither thrilling nor entertaining to play a game on the Nokia 2.2. It's best to go with simpler titles on this phone such as 2048 and Candy Crush Saga. What about the camera then? The primary and only camera on the back of the Nokia 2.2 is a 13 megapixel sensor with an aperture of f2.2 and autofocus. It's accompanied by a single LED flash that doubles as the phone's torch. The camera on the front is a 5 megapixel unit. The default camera app on the Nokia 2.2 features modes such as HDR, panorama, low light enhancement, time lapse, beautification, and Google Lens. Photos taken in daylight through the Nokia 2.2's primary sensor are somewhat dull and lacking in detail. Colors too appear faded and washed out. For example, the leaves on a tree seem drier than they really are. Zooming in reveals the loss in detail and focus in many elements of a frame. Photos taken indoors, however, are mostly noisy and colorless. Shots taken inside, say, a conference room, blur easily. Selfies, on the other hand, appear significantly sharper around the main subject, though they too could do with a bit more color. The default camera app is slow to react and nearly unusable. On many occasions, the app on the review unit stalled and closed when I tried to view a photo that was taken just a few seconds ago. Switching between photo and video modes takes nearly two whole seconds to happen. A beauty slider can be set for both regular photos and selfies. All in all, the Nokia 2.2 cannot be considered seriously for its optical prowess. If your budget can be stretched to accommodate a Redmi 7 instead of the Nokia 2.2, your mobile photography experience should improve significantly. Let's move on to the battery. According to our standard battery benchmark test, the Nokia 2.2 scored 7 hours 31 minutes. In comparison, the Nokia 4.2 and Redmi 7 scored 8 hours 50 minutes and 9 hours 5 minutes on the same test respectively. In everyday scenarios, the Nokia 2.2 review unit lasted a little over a day with moderate use, which included some 30 minutes of gaming, 20 minutes of browsing, and a few app installs. When the phone remained in a bag unused for two full days, the battery dropped from near full to 30%. Charging from 10% back to full took nearly two full hours on the standard bundled charger. In summary, the Nokia 2.2 has a decent battery life but could have done with better. Well, all things considered, I think the Nokia 2.2 is a bit of a disappointment considering its price and the expectations we had of it. What should you do then? I think you should get the Nokia 4.2. Now, I know that's nearly 2000 rupees more, but trust me, it's worth it. Or you could get the phone that our intern here has. Hi, my name is Rahul. I am using Redmi 7 from quite few days, uh, but this smartphone is good. But what I think is performance of this smartphone can be better. Hey, so I hope you enjoyed listening from our intern Rahul. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. For the latest technology updates, subscribe to Digit.in and don't forget to hit the bell icon.